Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back to Hilal Life. Thanks for watching us on channel 347 on DSTV. You can also stream on www.hilal.tv. As, as we do on Wednesday, we've invited our legal expert back into studio now today. We've got a very important topic that uh, it seems to have reared its ugly head over the last couple of years, uh, more and more prevalent in our communities, even during lockdown. It was quite prevalent as well. And I'm talking about um, the very important topic of domestic violence. So Yusuf Khan Dalwai back in studio to tell us a bit more. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Luqman to you, your viewers, and thank you for having me once again. My time. absolute pleasure. Sorry, I had a bit of a frog in my throat for a little bit there. Yusuf, the topic of domestic violence, as much as we can see various articles, as much as there's an awareness uh, from government, from various stakeholders as well, uh, we're still plagued with this problem in our communities, not just in our you know, uh, um, rural communities or less advantaged communities, even in all aspects and affluent areas as well. When we think about domestic violence, how does South Africa define that word domestic violence? Yes, like you rightfully said, that's a very sensitive topic. Yeah. Uh, it's a topic where various organs of state are conscientizing people, yeah. in creating uh, various workshops, in information sessions, uh, and also various awareness pertaining to domestic violence itself, mm -hmm. because it's become quite a ridden thing uh, or situation yeah. uh, within our society. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is quite serious and that needs to be dealt with uh, very yeah. drastically. Uh, therefore, going into the corridors of the courts, in any magistrate court you go to, the domestic violence court, you will see the number of people that's sitting there mm -hmm. making applications or waiting for the matter to be heard. It's actually very shocking. Yeah. And uh, it also becomes very overwhelming actually looking at the victims uh, that are victims of abuse and of domestic violence, mm -hmm. sitting those and waiting and seeking relief, uh, you know, against uh, uh, this type of violence uh, that they've encountered. Yeah. So domestic violence is basically um, whereby a complainant to a victim a victim that becomes a complainant mm -hmm. uh, uh, that has been injured or harm has been caused or is currently in the process of being caused mm -hmm. uh, is able to uh, approach a domestic violence court uh, for relief mm -hmm. in respect of what they are suffering. So from. does this only refer to physical violence? No, domestic violence, uh, I will explain the word domestic uh, in a okay. little while, Okay. Uh, but let us speak about what domestic violence entail. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are under the uh, impression that domestic violence only uh, pertain to physical the abuse. Physical harm. And okay. physical harm. Right. Uh, it's not only that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the, there is an act, okay, called the Domestic Violence Act, and the act defines and sets out the different forms of domestic abuse, okay? okay? okay. And that would be one of it is uh, physical abuse. Gotcha. We also have sexual abuse, uh, there's economic abuse, there's uh, harassment and intimidation, there's trespassing. So those are some of the uh, types of uh, abuse that uh, the Act protects uh, a victim from. Mm -hmm. So um, if I can just elaborate a little bit, physical sure. abuse, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I would actually like you to, but before we go on as well, I'd like to just encourage our viewers and put our disclaimer in that uh, tonight's topic is of a sensitive nature and you do have kiddos available uh, watching the program. And if you feel that it's a bit too sensitive for them, we'd uh, like to ask you to kindly ask them maybe to leave the room or not listen to it. Or if you'd like them to be more informed, you're welcome to stay tuned as well. But I thought, let me just add that uh, yes, for our viewers. Very well. good disclaimer indeed. Uh, or parental guidance. Absolutely. Uh, you know? yeah. uh, so uh, physical abuse, when you are physically harmed or injured uh, uh, and uh, you have sustained certain bruises or injuries, um, then there's economical abuse mm. where mm. Fi finance has been misused. For right. example, you have a joint account and the other party is abusing funds mm. out of the account. Alternatively, another party is selling your goods mm, without, uh, your consent. without your consent. Mm -hmm. Or, they, you know, something in line where you feel that you have been deprived 
mm. uh, of uh, economically in that relationship. Yeah. Okay. Then you have uh, uh, emotional and psychological abuse uh, where you are being humiliated, mm. you are being harassed, you are being uh, uh, intimidated, you are being threatened. Mm. Uh, all these type of uh, scenarios that not necessarily are of a physical nature, mm. uh, but it's utterances, you know, it, it's uh, it's conduct, it's behavior mm. uh, that causes harm to you as a person, of as course. an individual. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned about the courts as well. And for me, what's worrying, and you know, this is a, a whole separate topic on its own, is that when people go to court, the very same court has the victim and the perpetrator. And remember, during that time of abuse, for whatever abuse it was, it left an emotional scar. And are our courts changing that? Is it still that everybody, you know, is sat, seated across each other? Because surely that has to leave some turmoil and, and you know, some, what's the word uh, looking for? Um, uh, I'll get to it now. But surely it's got to leave a scar and, and leave people scarred, and you know? Yes, uh, unfortunately, um, when it comes to the court system, um, uh, both parties has to be present okay. uh, when a hearing takes place. Uh, it, it is very important mm. uh, for the purpose of a presiding officer yeah. to do, to make its decision. I was looking for the word trauma. Uh, you know, it trauma, leaves, it yes, yes, trauma no, of course. In yes, any victim. Yes, yeah. yes. Any form of abuse, uh, it's, it's traumatic. Yeah. Uh, the individual is not the only person that suffers uh, mm. in, in, in that process. Uh, whoever your dependents are also suffers. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, it's commonly, uh, uh, and the stigma is that it's usually the woman uh, that suffers, and our courts are filled up with our our women our, in society. Our, our sisters, but yeah. there are also men <clears throat> of course. Uh, that are victims of abuse. Okay, uh, let's break down the various uh, yeah. you know domestic violence yeah. then, and maybe encourage our viewers to be aware. And if yeah. this is happening to you, yeah. the various steps that you yes. can take. So uh, we've we've mentioned the physical abuse. We've right. mentioned the psychological and emotional abuse, mm. uh, economic abuse. I've uh, mentioned the examples for yeah. somebody selling your goods mm -hmm. uh, or someone uh, or the, the other party is uh, abusing your bank account right. uh, or not uh, paying money that's due to you at that time and that's, mm. you, know, you know, withholding it from you of course. and it is there. Um, so those type of in scenarios are related to economical abuse. Okay. Then there's also trespassing, you know, uh, uh, the right. individual that just feels uh, he or she has an entitlement to enter your premises mm. uh, and, and uh, take advantage of situations. Mm -hmm. And then sexual abuse, you know, forcing you into sexual intimacy or any, or, or any type of sexual conduct mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. Now, you may ask me, um, but what difference is it when it comes to going to court for a protection order mm. and going to the police station? Right? That's a common question yes, in our communities yes, that yeah. we faced with. Because right now, um, f and I mean this with the greatest of respect, mm. is that there's a bit of confusion there yeah. in terms of what to do. Because yes. let's face it, when a victim is in a particular position as well, the first port of call is your police station. Mm. Um, are our, our police stations adequately, you know, uh, prepared yes. to deal with situations now, like this? Now, that is why um, this topic is important for our viewers to understand mm -hmm. that the word domestic violence, mm -hmm. okay, there's, there's, a, there's a purpose for it. Right. The word domestic is very important. Okay. Because firstly, you, the police is, would want to determine your domestic relationship okay. with that person. Okay. Okay. And so is does the court want to determine that? Right. Okay. Do you have a domestic relationship with the person that you ha that abused you, mm. for example? Mm -hmm. So a domestic relationship is a spousal in a marriage, right. uh, ex spouse, uh, a girlfriend, a boyfriend situation, right. ex girlfriend, ex boyfriend, someone you had a relationship, even a parent and child. I was just going to say, yes. does that yes. also qualify? Also qualifies parent and child, mm. um, living in the same accommodation, roommates, you know, there's some domestic relationship. Okay. Okay. So now when it comes to physical abuse, okay. Uh, because that is more common right. uh, in our court system. When it comes to physical ab abuse, there's two options you have. Okay. And both uh, would, it's advisable that 
both has to be exhausted. Okay. One is your criminal charges. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is your option because the court would want to know about if you have exercised that. And um, secondly, uh, is when you approaching the court for relief, um, the the aspect of it being your spouse comes into play, so that it's why it's protected under okay. the Domestic Violence Act, and you are able to get relief from that sort. Okay. So there is a once-off incident, or there's a continuous situa situation. So when it comes to uh, 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 the once-off incident or the the current incident, going to the police station is fine, but you want to stop and prevent that mm -hmm. person from continuing yeah. that form of abuse then go to the, uh, the protection uh, domestic violence court and obtain a protection order to prevent, that would prevent uh, that person from that, further. That also comes, you know, becomes quite tricky because people are living in the same household. That's correct, yeah. How does that get, you know, handled? Some may be the breadwinner, uh, you know, uh, people may not have, you know, a place to go. There's, there's so many complications, that, I would imagine. Uh, that, that, that is the situation. Okay, yeah. so, so let's paint the picture. Somebody's been abused, they go to the the police station, first port mm. of call, I've been abused, I'm, I'm, I'm fearing for my life, mm. I've got nowhere to mm. go. Yeah. What, what, what are the steps that can be taken? So, so the police station would you usually also recommend that uh, that victim goes to the magistrate court mm. uh, to but, but make an application. But for that night, for that time for, that, that yeah. they fear in their yes. lives. Yeah. For that time, the police will definitely take uh, uh, your complaint okay. and will definitely attend to your complaint by either arresting uh, the, the suspect and the perpetrator mm. or the accused, uh, arrest that person. Uh, or take whatever necessary steps possible mm. to prevent uh, any further attack okay. uh, and to protect the victim uh, in that regard. Yeah. Is there trauma counselling involved in this process you, or does that happen later? Usually with the South African Police Services, if uh, a detective or any constable or any officer, ranking officer identifies trauma involved, mm -hmm. uh, emotional trauma, uh, they would definitely refer that victim to a trauma counseling uh, individual okay. uh, within the police station. Uh, every police station will definitely have a trauma counselor okay. available at any time. Great stuff. Uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, after the break, we will continue our conversation on uh, Hilal Live with uh, Brother Yusuf Khan Dalwa, who's an advocate and chatting about domestic violence. Uh, do join us after the break. You're also watching us on Hilal Live. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, shukran so much for joining us on uh, Hilal Live on Channel 347. My name's Lukman Shadrach. On tonight's uh, edition on our legal slot, we chat into Brother Yusuf Khan Dalwai around domestic violence, a worrying um, you know, complaint, a worrying issue that plagues our community and uh, the general part of South Africa where various organizations have taken a stand uh, to try and uh, speak to our communities to try and alleviate this very worrying problem. Brother Yusuf, Jazakallah so much. Uh, You're advocate Yusuf for, for coming in once again to, to studio and chatting about a very important topic. And I'm sure, you know, in the legal fraternity, this is like, you know, second nature because of the severe uh, problems that we face uh, in, in the court system as well. Before the break, we chatted about uh, the different types of domestic violence and um, who qualifies as well to be term determined as domestic violence. But in terms of the complainant, right, and who can, or the protection order, my apologies, the protection order, who can actually apply for a protection order? Okay, now any complainant mm -hmm. who's been uh, implicated or mm -hmm. been affected by any sort of abuse within the domestic relationship that mm -hmm. we referred to earlier on, um, may uh, make an application to the Domestic Violence Court. Okay, okay that and that is, is found one. where? That's at your regional courts? Your magistrate court. Magistrate court. Your, okay. So you can go to the magistrate court within your area, mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the, whichever magistrate court has jurisdiction of the area in which you live. Okay. Alternatively, you can approach the magistrate court in which the, comp uh, the, which the uh, uh, respondent lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. Or you can approach the court in which the action arose, mm. right? So if, for example, you live in Weinberg and the other party lives in Paro, mm. but it actually happened in Cape Town, right. you, you, you may approach any one of the three I see. Uh, courts, yeah. okay? So um, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that individual may do so, okay? Um, 
you, a complainant may also uh, make an application on behalf of a child uh, that has sufficient interest of the well-being of that child, for example, okay. uh, a social worker, a doctor, uh, a teacher. Um, uh, there's an interest uh, that uh, that individual has of the well-being of that child. Mm -hmm. um, However, if someone else is making an application on your behalf and you're over the age of 18, you're a mm -hmm. major, uh, you will need written consent from that okay. person okay. To, for a third party to make the application on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, those are the people that can uh, make this application. In terms of the process, and I think this is integral in terms that things are done right from the get-go. Yeah. And you're going through all this trauma yeah. at this time. So you may not want to be in the best fr frame of mind or can be in the best yeah. frame of mind. So yeah. let's chat about the process so our viewers could understand yeah. uh, what's expected. Now, this process ex is extremely important in order for you to be able to obtain the relief you're seeking from the court. Yeah. Because if your application is baseless and without merit, uh, that application uh, won't go anywhere. Yeah, and all too often right? we do find that. Yes. Now... When you're approaching your court, you need to uh, um, have thought, uh, thought things through, mm -hmm. okay? Obtain sufficient grounds and evidence yeah. uh, to support your claim and to support your allegations that you're making against another individual. Because this, right? if not substantiated, uh, it's going to you know, allow your case to not... Yes, uh, to go anywhere, any if, further. If you're a single witness, there's also always a cautionary mm. rule uh, pertaining to single witness. Gotcha. However, the presiding officer will decide on the basis of probabilities, on the balance of probabilities. Uh, however, so when you do go, make sure you have sufficient evidence, whether it's in writing, whether it's a photo, mm. if it's injuries, your, your pictures of it, a medical report, an assessment, you know, it's, and there's a special form for that where doctors complete, it's called the J88. Okay. These are important uh, documentation to support your application. So whatever allegations you make, Make sure that you are able to support that allegation. Now we we see a lot of applications that that comes, and um, and and applicants or complainants usually write a long story of what how it started. You mm. know, mm. started us sitting at the lounge in the lounge, and we were watching SABC three, mm. and then Hilal TV, Hilal TV, mm -hmm. and then uh, Lukman uh, brought on a guest that mm. said something that affected me, and you know. And I said something, and my the other person said something, and that's how that's that's not relevant mm. to your application. Mm. What is relevant is what has transpired, right? And you, how did how and, did you feel? Yeah, yes, and during that process. Is, yes, exactly. So in your application, you've got to set out your grounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, be concise and be clear. Okay? okay, as to what your allegations are, substantiate substantiate to the best that you can. Right. Okay, supporting documents. You need to also, in the application, you need to uh, uh, set out what relief are you seeking from the court. Okay. For example, that he or she uh, desist of uh, emotionally abusing me okay. or trespassing or coming uh, to my work mm -hmm. or uh, harassing me via telephone or... Um, speaking about me to people gotcha. uh, you know you you got to sit out what it is you want from the court okay. to grant okay right. and uh, also traumatic uh, the staff at the courts would assist you with that in terms of wording it or are you left to your own you devices? are left most of the time left to your own uh, to to draft because remember it's an affidavit and right. affidavit is something that you are deposed to mm. uh, and not someone else drafting it for you mm. okay mm. you can be guided by your attorney right right and you're giving your attorney instructions and your attorney will then uh, set out the grounds, extract what you're saying, set out the grounds mm. to make it easier for you if, mm. if, if you want to utilize the services of a legal practitioner. Okay. Um, uh, otherwise, you're left to your own accord to, to sure. actually write your, your, your story or, or make your allegations. And I would imagine this is where most of the cases get thrown out or not taken any yeah. further because maybe the education level or the you know not to show how to fill out the form that's or correct yes. left out yes. impertinent information yes. Yes. worried worried yeah. um once 
the protection order has been submitted. Okay. What is the process so then? So once it's granted, um, uh, once the application has been made, the clerk of the court will then assess if you require an interim order. For example, okay. if there is sufficient evidence uh, um, of abuse, uh, like uh, injuries and something quite serious, mm -hmm. uh, the clerk will take it to the magistrate and uh, have an order granted, an uh, interim order granted immediately. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to explain to you what Please. that would entail, but yeah. let me just give you the ongoing process. So um, you will then have the protection, interim protection order, mm -hmm. and there will be a return date on that uh, order, mm -hmm. uh, whereby that application is served uh, on the respondent. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. And that respondent has to appear in court on a certain date to show show the court show cause why the final protection should not be granted or any or protection order should not be granted. So um, when it is, that person will have an uh, opportunity to oppose the application, okay, and provide evidence in rebuttal, okay, to in, in, in terms of his position or her position. Uh, for example, if that individual or the respondent has sufficient evidence to okay. counter uh, the application itself, mm -hmm. uh, then it will go for a hearing and the, the court, the presiding officer will make a decision mm -hmm. as to whether the matter is been granted, the protection order is granted or not. Okay. So once it's granted, okay, the court will uh, uh, issue the, the final order that the protection order is granted mm. with the relief that you were seeking okay. Okay. together with a warrant of arrest. Oh, wow. So you will have a warrant Even, of arrest. Okay. Uh, is this now the uh, uh, the perpetrator then gets delivered the warrant of arrest? No, no, no. no. The, the applicant okay. will be granted the protection order. Okay. With the order, you the, the applicant will also be granted a warrant of arrest. Okay. Now the warrant of arrest is like a loaded gun, for example. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So when the respondent act in a way uh, that the co uh, that the applicant has seek protection from, mm. the applicant is then in a position to go to the police station, hand the warrant of arrest, and the police will have to go out and arrest the respondent. So in other words, layman's terms is. Um, so they protect him immediately if this persists, yeah. if there's the first yeah. incident or how many incidents. And yeah. now that it's been formally recorded, yes. if something happens to the victim uh, and then that perpetrator then gets arrested because the warrant of arrest has been submitted. Has been submitted. Gotcha. Yeah. So the police will arrest uh, the individual and uh, the normal uh, criminal court process will take place. Okay. He will appear in court and uh, he'll have to apply for bail if need be, or he comes on a warning, and uh, an, a normal court case, a criminal court case will take place. Mm. So, thank you very much. I think it's very informative. I think that it gives us an outline for those that are seeking help, assistance uh, in our legal system. Uh, I mean, we can talk in volumes and yeah. episodes with regards to where it's falling short, where it's happening or not happening. And let's face it, I mean, having a legal practitioner by your side uh, often assists the process in going further, yes. uh, swifter, I would imagine, as well. That's correct. Um, but also protecting your peace of mind. That's correct. There's one, one more aspect I need to just add, if I may. Sure. Um, if you do not have a domestic relationship with someone, but someone is harassing you. Mm. There's another option for you to also go to the protection or the uh, domestic violence court. Okay. And that relief that you will find with, uh, with in terms of the harassment act. I got you. So if there's no domestic relationship, mm -hmm. you still uh, in a position to go to the protection. We're all on uh, social the, media these yeah. days. We've heard of cyberbullying and yes. all of that. Does yes. that constitute? That will Does... constitute that. Yes. Lovely. Yusuf, thanks very much. You're welcome. Looking forward to next week's edition. Thank we you. will open our WhatsApp lines next week as well so that uh, our viewers can participate uh, in the conversation and maybe ask some per pertinent questions as well. Have a great evening. Thank Salam you very much. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. And uh, that's how we end uh, Hilal Live from our Cape Town studios. Thanks for joining us and watching us on Channel 347. From the Cape Town team, Sahel Barnes and myself, Lukman Shadrach, have a great evening. Assalamu alaikum.